I got this request to do a video on the J1 haplogroup, but I thought, you know, J1 is an interesting haplogroup, but why not study J1 and J2? They are both very interesting. So this is a map of where the J haplogroup occurs. You can see it's heaviest in the Middle East, in Arabia, uh, in the Caucasus, in the southwestern parts of Iran. So where does it come from? J haplogroup in CHG and Zuzwana. So this CHG Satsurblia, who had lived a very long time ago, I wouldn't trust these exact numbers, but a very long time ago, had haplogroup J as his white DNA. And Cotias, Caucasus hunter-gatherer, had a later version J2A. We can assume that J, Y DNA comes from Zuzuana. Why? So, CHG is the result of a mixture between Zuzuana and ancient North Eurasians. And haplogroup J is cousins to I, which is Paleo European, and K. And all are found in the Near Eastern Europe. However, ancient North Eurasian Y DNA, which also comes from like I, IJKP or whatever, it's also related, but it's more distantly related. Um, R and Q, it was absent from Europe until the Mesolithic. So you can assume that the ancient North Eurasians did not have haplogroup J. I mean, G is what I'm saying. Or G or J, I don't know. English is not my first language. Um, one interesting thing that complicates matters is the Karelian hunter-gatherer, this particular sample, who had haplogroup J. J, right? I mean, that's J or G, I don't know. <laughs> I think that's J. Um, yeah, so who he got this haplogroup from? It is very interesting, probably from a mixture of Caucasus hunter-gatherers, because these Eastern hunter-gatherers did have a little bit of Caucasus hunter-gatherer ancestry. Uh, haplogroup J could not have come from ancient North Eurasians, because none of the ancient North Eurasian samples that we have uh, had Y-DNA J or I or K. Uh, additionally, people who have paternal origins from ancient North Eurasians have... Q, Y, DNA, but not J or I or K. Now, it doesn't mean that just because Amerindians only have Q without the R doesn't mean that ancient North Eurasians only had the Q without the R. It's just selection and... Uh, yeah, it's, it's just selection. So it doesn't really prove anything. But we can know for sure that ancient North Eurasians did not have J. So, so the Caucasus hunter-gatherers could not have got J from ancient North Eurasians. What are the implications of Zuzuana having J Y DNA? So that would link the Anatolian hunter gatherers with the European hunter gatherers. Keep in mind that J and I are related. This could justify the Reichian theories about Zuzuana being a mixture of Cro-Magnons with basal Eurasians. Uh, then what is basal Eurasian Y DNA? Or it could justify my own theory of ancestral North Hyperboreans. Uh, which are the maternal ancestors of Cromanions. The problem with Reichian theories is the presence of J1 in the Horn of Africa. Some of the pre-Arab populations, Natufians, etc., must have carried J1 into the Horn of Africa. That means that J must have a Zuzuana and not a Cromanion origin. So if J does have a Zuzuana and not Cromanion origin, that means that I also has a Zuzuana or something similar to Zuzuana and not a Cromanion origin. That means the difference between the Cromanions and Zuzuana has to be explained by something like ancestral North Hyperboreans, which is a group I um, you can see on the right of the image. I'll zoom in. This group, ancestral North Hyperboreans. Okay. So I think it's a much uh, my theory is much more sound and much more principled than what David Reich is putting forth. So why didn't European farmers have JY DNA, but instead G2A? So here's the difference between J and G. Maybe very uh, hard to not mix up for me. Well, as shown in the previous slide, there is more than one kind of Anatolian hunter-gatherer. Seems that Anatolian hunter-gatherers that made their way into Europe were more G and less J. That would be the Zuzuana-like one. Those two haplogroups are pretty closely related to one another anyway. So you see the Zuzuana-like one on the left, and Zuzuana like 2, which is the J. So I, J, K plus G are, once again, they are related. They are related lineages to one another. So they're all related. They're pretty similar to each other, but uh, there, there are a couple 
thousands of years that separate these lineages. So here's the J1 origin on SP tracker. And a lot of people, a lot of clowns in my comment section have said, you know, E1B is an African haplogroup because it was in Africa at some point. Well, guess what? Every haplogroup was in Africa at some point, including mine, including uh, O, including I, including every Nordic haplogroup that existed was in Africa at some point. Fact is, by the Paleolithic, haplogroup E was already out of Africa. And haplogroup J1, by the Paleolithic, already out of Africa. So it's not an African haplogroup. Just because it was in Africa at some point in history, does it make it an African, a sub-Saharan African haplogroup, okay? I have I have these blacks uh, go in the comments and tell me that E1B in Southern Europeans or, or elsewhere, Natufians, proves that they were an African heritage. These people are absolute idiots, absolute uh, smooth brains, okay? Just because this haplogroup was in Africa at some point in history, a long time ago, doesn't make it a sub-Saharan African haplogroup because so was mine, so was every other lineage that exists. Africa is the birthplace of uh human race so yes it was in africa at some point in time okay same as j same as yeah that's j but by the paleolithic you see it was already in the fertile crescent and here is j2 on snp tracker once again by the paleolithic it is already in the fertile crescent so uh i don't want anybody any of you idiots any of you sub-saharan black idiots in the comments saying this is an african haplogroup uh, okay, this is this part of the video is addressing specifically to you. Uh, here is the relatedness to other haplogroups of G, um, J2. Right, so you see uh, CTM168, this is the last common ancestor with E1B. Uh, IJK L15, which is the, this is the last common ancestor with R and Q. So I have an, I have haplogroup R. And my haplogroup is pretty closely related to J, I mean, J or G, J. Yeah, J2, J1. It's pretty closely related. They, they give them the um, time and most recent common ancestor, TMRCA. They give a crazy date like 44,000 years ago. I think it's much closer than that. I don't trust this date whatsoever. But there is not much, you know, it's a pretty close. It's a pretty close haplogroup to what I have. Uh, the IJP124, this is the last common ancestor between I and J, which would be the last common ancestor between the um, North European, kind of European hunter-gatherer I, and the Middle Eastern J, which are pretty closely related to each other. So here's the J1 map, and it's just kind of a map from, I think it's a map from... Um, I can't even tell you. I mean, it's late. I'm not thinking too well. So it's highest in Jordan at 61%, followed by Yemen at 59%, followed by Saudi Arabia and Syria. And it's just pretty high in all the Arab Arab places. And here's the J, J, G or J, okay, J, J2 map. And the most J2 country is actually Palestine at 31%. I know it doesn't look like it on the map. But it is Palestine. I checked. Followed by Georgia and Lebanon at 25%, Iran at 22%, Turkey and Iraq at 21%, and Russia at 20%. What's interesting about Russia? I'm guessing the Russian number is not about ethnic Russians. I'm guessing it's about like Chechens, Ingush, uh, various people in Dagestan. Uh, one thing that caught my eye, caught my attention, is this little bit of and this little spot in Mardovia. You see, it's right next to Moscow, this little spot here. I wonder how it got there. So thank you for watching the video. Subscribe to my channel, like my video, and also support my friend Christian. He makes t-shirts, designs. He makes designs for t-shirts and stickers in support of the presidential candidate, Ronald DeSantis. It's a very noble cause. Um, help my friend make some money.